Marcus, two years. Two years at Heathwood Hall. He served as the head coach last season, but now you're going to be leaving there. Now you're going back to your alma mater and you're going to be part of the football program. Did you ever think you'd be a Gamecock again? Well, I don't think I ever stopped being a Gamecock. Uh, you know, I watch those guys every Saturday. Uh, that's where I got my education at. And I'm, you know, forever a Gamecock, no matter what. But um, it is a, a pretty full circle moment uh, to be able to go back to my university and help them. Um, I'm really, really, really looking forward to it. And I, I'm excited about the future because um, I know the tra trajectory that we're on um, as far as the football program goes. And, you know, with the university, you know, I've kept in contact with so many people around the university and in, the, in particular Coach Muschamp. And, um, I'm just so excited about this, this new endeavor of uh, being director of player development uh, for the football team at the University of South Carolina. So explain that. What do you mean by that with what you'll be doing at USC? Uh, well, Coach Muschamp, for him and every conversation that I've had with Coach, it's the same message over and over and over again. I'm here for the players. What can I do for the players? Without the players, we wouldn't have a job. He understands that. And me and Coach Muschamp have a lot of similarities. We've, we've developed a good relationship. Um, and he has a program called Beyond Football. And Beyond Football is exactly what it sounds like. So this is his program? This is his program uh, that he's brought and created. And he wants me to direct that. Mm. Um, and it's all about helping guys off the field. You know, it's about equipping them for life. Uh, because as bad as guys want to go to the NFL, it just doesn't happen for everybody. Well, let me ask you something like that. When you come in, when you come in freshman year, right. give me a percent. How many of these guys truly believe they're going to go to the NFL? Right. I, I, I would probably say 100% think, they, think they're going to the NFL. Especially, I'd say, with the SEC in, in South Carolina. Particularly. Absolutely. And, you know, they come from a town where they're the star player. And everybody their whole life has told them how good they are and that they're going to make it. And that's what they expect because they performed at a high level and, you know, they expect to come to college and do the same thing. It happens for some guys and for some guys it doesn't. For a lot of guys it doesn't. And, I mean, if you look at the statistics, 0.3 of high school players playing football right now will make it on a NFL roster. 0.3 out of over a million kids who are playing. It just doesn't happen. And making sure that these guys have that type of self-awareness, knowing that I got to have a plan B. I got to have something else to do. Making sure that they know the importance of giving back, the, giving back to the community and making sure that they graduate and they have that degree, but also they have a meaningful job that gives them the same satisfaction that football gave them. That's my goal for everybody who leaves this program. And, and I think that's Coach Muschamp's goal as well. Uh, making sure that they, they know who they are. They have, they found their identity while they were in college. That's my goal. Now I'm gonna get back to your mission about this because you have a 12 page slide, uh, slideshow on here, a little PowerPoint, but this thing has been around for a while. This isn't just something that just happened overnight. Yeah. So. Uh, when, when there were discussions of Coach Muschamp uh, being the head coach at the University of South Carolina, we, I actually got a call from Coach Muschamp. He didn't waste any time. He, yeah, he didn't, he, he didn't waste any time. And I, I was, you know, obviously grateful and, and, you know, surprised that he even gave me a call. Um, but it was before he even got the job that uh, we were talking about. Uh, me being involved in the in the program and you know it just never worked out it was you know some things with my foundation and you know I was what doing those things? yeah it, so with my foundation I work with student athletes mm -hmm. uh, on a day-to-day -day basis and some of those student athletes are recruitable to the University of South Carolina uh, but I've worked some things out uh, with with compliance and the NCAA and we've we've gotten things ironed out. So what's the difference now compared to last year when they wouldn't let you do this? I can't technically be involved in my foundation programs. I can still have my foundation. I can still do the things that I want to do, but I can't be present at those events. So for example, a couple weeks ago, you take 25 foster children to Walmart. The only difference is you just can't be in attendance. You can still do everything behind the scenes. Exactly. 
And what, does that, and what does that mean to you to be able to still be part of your foundation, to be able to make a difference? Because you've talked about it for years. Absolutely. I mean, this, the state of South Carolina and the people here have, have given me so much that it is my God-given duty to give back to them. Mm. Uh, so that is something that hopefully will carry on when I'm gone. And, that, and that's something that, that's very close to me because of the people here in South Carolina. I want them to be prepared. I know what sports means to the state and they have so much power. So um, all the high school student athletes that I've helped, I can continue to help and, that, and that's a good feeling. Now you talked about it before with your mission though. You talked about it being able to help sure. these kids find an identity, the community service element of it, skills to be able to succeed in whatever professional job that they want to Absolutely. attain after football. How important is that stuff? Because obviously you went on to play in the NFL for a little bit. Things just didn't work out because of your knee injuries. Yeah. What are you going to tell these kids? Because they're going to look at Marcus Lattimore, one of the guys that they said, you know, what if, what if, what if the knees didn't go out? He could have maybe won a Heisman. He could have been maybe still playing in the NFL today. What do you tell these kids when you are able to meet with them? Well, it's, they, they see my story, uh, and, and, and most of them do know my story. And, I, you know, I, I revert back to myself all the time. You know, I was a guy who climbed that ladder. You know, from the time I was seven years old, I played the game of football. And I knew exactly where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to the NFL. And it was important to me. And I was in a tunnel my whole life. If I, hard, if I, if I worked hard, if I stayed dedicated, good things would happen. Well, adversity hit in my life. I had a knee injury to my left. I had a right knee injury. My career was over with at the age of 23. What do you do when things happen like that? I'm able to help them on that personal level because I've sat in their shoes. I know what they're going through, but I also had a plan after. Mm -hmm. And not many guys do. I want to be that voice for those guys and make sure that they're, they have meaningful education while they're here. Making sure that they're meeting with alumni, making sure that everything that they want to do with their career, they can do because they've acquired skills that transfer. You know, all the things that you learn in the game of football, those things are what employers look for. Leadership, integrity, and I bridge that gap with the other things that they don't learn. The written and verbal communication skills. All of these things that you need to, to just get through life because life is tough and life is hard. And if you don't have those basic soft skills, it's hard to navigate through life. And, you know, God's blessed me, and um, I, I, I just, I just want to be a blessing to those guys how many in that these, locker room. How many of these guys do you think look at it as that's their only way out, though? That's their only way out. I know you came back from, from poverty. You talked about that, how tough Christmases were sometimes with the presents. How tough do you think it is for some of these kids? Because they look at it. They might not have a father figure in their life. They might not know better. They might say, hey, this is the only way I'm going to be able to get out from where I am in order to get my family to a better place. And they just don't have that plan B. How important is that, though, to be like, look, I'm an example of this. I went through your shoes. It's not just someone that's just saying this to them. It's someone that actually lived it. It's, it's critical. It's critical in their sanity, honestly. Uh, that they realize there's more to life than football, and you're not here just to play football, all right? You're, you're here for a higher purpose. You're here to give back. You're here to share your story. Um, they ha what I want these guys to realize is that they have so much power being here in the state of South Carolina. There's only two teams. It's South Carolina and there's Clemson, and there's 84,000 people that come to that stadium every single Saturday to see you play. You can use that. You can use football and not let football use you because it can easily be, easily be turned around if you're able to navigate it the, the way that you should. And that's my job. That's my job to show them that way, to show them how to use the power that they have and make sure that when football ends, it's not detrimental. It hurts. I know because I've been through it. Yes, you wanted to play in the league. You wanted to play 15 years. But you got 60 more years to live. What else are you going to do? My job is to help them and show them the way that you can have a prosperous, good life even when sports end.
You know when the story drops, people start reading the headlines, first thing they're going to think, Marcus Lattimore going back to USC football, they're going to think they're going to be involved in some capacity with the coaching. What is the opportunity with that? Is there any possibility that you'll be working with any of the stuff with coaching these kids up? And if it's not necessarily a coaching position, will you still believe that you'll be probably working with these kids in some degrees to be able to help them out on the field? Well, the, the unique, the unique, I guess, thing about this job is that it can go in any different avenue that I want it to go into. Uh, and Coach Muschamp has, has explained that to me as, as well. I mean, if you want to go into coaching, you can go into coaching. If you want to go into administration, you can go into administration. If you want to go into fundraising, you can go into fundraising. This job can go any way that I want it to go. Will I probably be involved with the running backs in some capacity? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, there's some goals and, and, and some aspirations that I have personally for myself um, that, that I know that I can – I can achieve um, if I if 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 I can take this job and, and run with it and and really help a lot of guys. What are some of those goals? Um, you know, when I was when I was a senior in high school, I wrote a paper on Bill Polian. Um, he was the general manager um, at the time for the Indianapolis Colts, and I was I was just so impressed by him and, and admired his story and everything that he'd been through and him and Tony Dungy and how that that connection was and that made me want to be an NFL GM one day and I, I know there's a lot of different hurdles and obstacles and, and things that I have to achieve before I get to that point um, but you know that's it. That's a, that's a lifelong dream for me to, to be able to run an NFL team. And obviously, you still have to be able to go here to USC. You have a long ways to go. But what would make you unique, though, to be a general manager in the NFL? Well, this is obviously a, a goal that, that I've set, and I know it's going to take some time and, and a lot of development on, on my end. Uh, but, you know, I've played football my whole life. I've been around the game on the high school level, on the college level. Um, and also on the NFL level, for, NFL level for a brief stint, and uh, you know I've been able to, um, Frank Gore, you know, just interact with so stuff. many different types of human beings, and I know that you have, have you have to have a a a wide skill set to be able to manage a whole NFL team, you know, because you you deal with so many different things. You have to be a talent evaluator. You have to be a a a character evaluator. Um, and I feel like those two things are something that I can grow in, grow in. but also, you know, as be, being a part of something bigger than myself, I've been, I've been doing that my whole life. Um, and I, I, know what it's, I know what it takes to be a part of a winning team. And, you know, just things like that, I think, make me, make me on that, put me on a different level when it comes to certain things. Um, but also, you know, the skills that you need to be an NFL GM, I know it takes time and I, I know it takes patience, but um, those are things I'm willing to learn and willing to grow from. And I know this job uh, here at the University of South Carolina, being in player development will help me what in that aspect. What does the university aspect. mean to you? What is South Carolina? Man, it's um, the University of South Carolina means so much to me because of the platform that it gave gave for me. Uh, I came here to play football. I got a lot more. Um, I, I've developed lifelong relationships. Um, I've been able to impact so many people uh, because of what I did here at the university and some of the things that I've been through. And I don't know how I could ever ever repay the university for what it has given to me and that's purpose you know without the University of South Carolina I wouldn't I wouldn't be on I wouldn't be the person I am today I wouldn't have the platform that I have today to impact so many young kids and so many adults because of my story and they've been with me every step of the way anytime that I've needed anything any support whether that be the fans, the administration, um, the athletic department, every single, 
every single avenue of the University of South Carolina um, has 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 given me so much. My professors, um, I, I can call President Pastides at any time. Um, it, it's it's just that that type of relationship, and um, I'm, I, I want to be a part of the first championship uh, to come to Columbia, South Carolina. I know Coach Muschamp um, is is the guy to do that. When you told me this news and how you wanted to break this and how you wanted to get the word out there, one of the things you asked me to do, one of the requests you had is, because we're pre-taping this, we were pre-taping this interview before you told your players. You said you wanted to make sure that you told your players before this information got out there, the players at Heathwood Hall. Absolutely. How important are those guys over there to you? Oh, man. You know, from every fifth grader to every senior that I've had, they've made an impact on my life. Um, and, and each one of them in different ways and I can't thank them for that. So that's why it was it was important for me to, to let my guys know um, that that um, coach is gonna be gonna be heading up to the university and I got some dreams and goals that I want to achieve as well and um, this is just the right the right direction for me. But you know, just everybody in the Heathwood community um, ha has really been a blessing in my life. Um, from all of the coaches and everybody that I've met uh, that is connected to Heathwood. Uh, that ever since I came that first day, they've welcomed me with open arms, and you know that feeling of being able to be yourself. Um, it it's something I don't take for granted. Um, they they allowed me to grow uh, professionally. Uh, Chris Hentry and Jeff Whalen gave me my first job, first real job, and. I've grown so much in these two years because of the opportunity that I had at Heathwood. And I am forever grateful uh, to the school and to everybody who, 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 who really welcomed me, who, who really embraced me. Not, not, not this guy that they see on TV or the guy that they know as the player at the University of South Carolina. They embraced me as a person. And it, it, it was, I can't, I can't ever repay them for that, for, for just for that alone, embracing me as a human, nothing else.